Hello, this is Father Andy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And today is Tuesday of the 15th week in Ordinary Time. It's also a special feast day. This is the feast day of St. Kateri Tekakwitha, who is the first Native American saint and uh, was uh, born and lived in the 17th century uh, around the New York area and was called the Lily, uh, the Lily of the Mohawks. So I just want to encourage you, take some time today and uh, read about St. Kateri, or uh, that's uh, her name, Catherine, uh, in Mohawk. So anyway, that's, that's the name that she was baptized with. And uh, today is a great day when we reflect upon the way in which God, through his missionaries, really impacted the North American continent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds have been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted into heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is a bit of a hard gospel, isn't it? Uh, this is a passage of Scripture that comes uh, a little bit after yesterday's Scripture where Jesus went to the towns to teach and to preach where his disciples had gone. And in the midst of that, he, he makes a declaration. And it's an interesting uh, geographical declaration. He talks about Chorazin, Bethsaida, and of course, Capernaum. These are three cities, all of which are on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. And you may remember that Capernaum is where he set up his headquarters uh, for his Galilean ministry. And it is sad to report that even though Capernaum was where he headquartered, and he did many miracles there, he did miracles in Chorazin, he did miracles in Bethsaida, even though he did miracles in those places, it did not impact the city in terms of turning that city toward God in a, a, a powerful way. And then he compares those three cities to three other cities. First, you have Tyre and Sidon. Uh, Tyre is about 35 miles to the northwest, and Sidon is about 60 miles to the northwest, and they are off along the, the Mediterranean Sea. And he says that if the miracles that had been done in these three Galilean cities had been done up there, that uh, it would have been more tolerable. They would have had a lot better reception. And then he even talks about, in comparison to Capernaum, he talks about Sodom. You remember Sodom from Sodom and Gomorrah, the city that was destroyed and by judgment of God uh, back in the Old Testament days. And he said that if what had happened in Capernaum had happened in Sodom, uh, that it would have been a, a different day for them. So what is, what is Jesus really getting at here? What is it that we can take away? Obviously, he is making a declaration about these cities that he had gone to uh, in this ministry time. But what he's really talking about is opportunity. That these three cities had a great opportunity. Jesus was there. Jesus was doing miracles in their midst. Jesus was present. He was uh, offering himself to them freely and openly, not only to do miracles, but to teach, to preach, and to share them the hope of God in the kingdom of heaven. And they did not take advantage of it even though they had a, that opportunity. And he said, you know, these opportunities, if they'd been given to other places, how different it would have been for them. But they didn't have those opportunities. But you did. <clears throat> so we can look at that and say, well, perhaps there are some opportunities 
that God gives us. And I think that we have to see these opportunities as means through which we can obtain the grace of God. We can receive his grace through connecting with him in a more special way. Obviously, uh, one of the ways that we do that is through the Mass. And when we are at Mass, an opportunity that we have that many others don't, that there is that, that sense that because I'm here, God is going to be able to speak to me. Because I'm here, God is going to be able to offer me his grace in a tangible way through the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. God is here, and, and I can take advantage of this very special opportunity of his manifest presence. How good is that? And there are other times, you know, one of the things that we have uh, in our Catholic faith is we have what are called days of holy obligation. Sunday is, and then there are major feast days, solemnities that are days of holy obligation. And I, I like to tell people, I don't like the term obligation, holy obligation. It sounds like, well, I got to do it whether I like it or not. These are days of holy opportunity, a day when we have the opportunity, the, 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 the invitation is there for us to receive of his grace and his love through the scriptures, through our prayers, and in particular, through the Eucharist, as we do have that opportunity for a special time of abiding with, with him through his body and blood in the Eucharist. So this is, a, again, a day of holy opportunity for all of us. This is a Tuesday, but it's a day of opportunity. We've heard the scriptures. We can receive from them great strength that can be ignited by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So be encouraged. This is a great day, and we don't want to miss out on something that other people, if they could have it, would desire to have it more than anything else. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, after this day of holy opportunity, again, I invite you to uh, look at uh, St. Kateri, Kateri Tekakwitha, and take a look at her life and the ways in which she gave herself ultimately and completely to our Lord and uh, did it risking her life in the process. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.